I would like to take a moment to introduce chapter 11 to you. Um, chapter 11 is a little bit different than what we've encountered in the past. It doesn't really look a lot like calculus at first, and I want to motivate some of our discussion. So what are we supposed to get out of chapter 11? What's the point? Now, chapter 11 has like 10 sections or 11 sections, something like that. So um, it's easy to get lost on where we're going with everything. But I want you to consider this integral, the integral of sine of x squared dx. Now, what's interesting about this integral is this integral does not have a simple antiderivative. Okay? So, um, what I mean by that is if you tried u substitution or integration by parts or really anything, you can't really solve it. You can't really say this is equal to some function. It's just not possible. Okay. So what do we do? We actually take a totally different approach. So I want to remind you of something that we learned earlier in chapter 7.7. Uh, in 7.7, we learned that uh, we can use polynomials, okay? And polynomials can approximate functions, okay? So by that I mean we could say uh, f of x is approximately equal to the summation as i goes from 1 to n. And then we could have some variable like x to the ith power and then multiplied by some coefficient like c to the c sub i, like this. So we can use polynomials, uh, but and polynomials are only going to give us an approximation to our function. So what else can we do? Well, this new object that we want to study in this chapter is something called power series. And power series, a power series is basically an infinite polynomial. Okay, so if I were to, to uh, look at what a power series would look like, basically you'd have f of x. And in fact, it's actually going to be equal to an infinite sum. So we're going to put a summation over here. i is going to go from 1 to infinity, and then we still have ci, x sub i, like this. So I want to emphasize the fact that we have an infinite polynomial. So I'm going to highlight this infinity here. And for the polynomial, I'm just going to highlight that n because it, it's just a finite number of terms. Okay. So uh, I also want to highlight this power series term. So let me do that. So we're saying that power series are actually equal to our function. I'm going to put in parentheses here for certain values of x. So really, the ultimate goal of chapter 11 is really to find power series of functions, power series of functions like sine of x squared, for example. And, um, you know, we also actually need to worry about this for certain values of x question. In other words, for which values of x you know, is this power series going to add up to a finite number and actually equal our function? Okay, so I want to remind you that we had studied something in chapter 7.8. And 
in 7.8, we had learned about improper integrals. Okay, and there were two types of improper integrals. One of the two types was something that we had called type one. And the type one is what I call the uh, horizontal case. Type two, you had a discontinuity. It was sort of vertical, vertically infinite, potentially. Okay, so uh, when we were studying this type one integral, we said that you know the integral from a to infinity. So we have an infinite range of uh, an infinite interval of integration. Uh, if this exists, we said that our integral was convergent. Right? And if did, this did not exist, we said that the integral was divergent. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to study something similar with objects called series. Really, series is short for power series. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that uh, our main concern one of them at the beginning, at least, is, uh, let me just say, initially, is the convergence or divergence of series. Okay, So we're basically going to look at series and try to decide if they converge or diverge. Cool. So let's define exactly what we mean by a series. A series is going to be an infinite sum. We're going to use sigma notation to represent it. We could have n start at 1 and go to infinity like this. And we're going to have this general term in here called a n. So uh, when we write out each term, it's going to the first term is going to be a1. The sigma means we add. You got a2 plus a3, and so on and so forth. If I want to describe what the nth term looks like, that's going to be a n. And then it goes on forever like this. So this a n is what we call the general term or the nth term. All right. Just like for the integrals, if this sums to a finite number, we say the series converges. And if it sums to an infinite number or does not exist, then we say it diverges. OK. So for example, if I have something that looks like the summation, as n goes from 1 to infinity of 0, I just keep adding 0 to itself. That's going to be 0. So we say that converges. And I'm lazy. So sometimes for converges, I'll write, I'll write something like CGS. OK? On the other hand, if you have something that looks like the summation as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1, well, you're going to keep adding 1 to itself, 1 plus 1 plus 1. And you keep adding 1 to itself an infinite number of times. This is going to add up to infinity. So we say this diverges. And my abbreviation for diverges is DGS. OK? So maybe I should put that over here. Converges. This means diverges. Let me give you one more example. Um, if I have the infinite sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, but I'm going to put a negative 1 to the nth power, what does that look like? Well, the first term is negative 1. The second term is 1. The third term is negative 1. The fourth term is 1. And it just keeps alternating back and forth. Plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1. So what that means is that half the time you're going to get a negative 1, and the other half of the time you're going to get 0. And it keeps bouncing back and forth between 
negative one and zero. So this is a case where this series also diverges. And um, we really want to understand how to show that this thing diverges. And this will be the, uh, the point of our next video. So just to make it explicitly clear, um, this example here corresponding to where it sums to an infinite number, and this example over here is corresponding to this case where uh, the sum does not exist. Okay, so these are both divergent examples. All right, everyone. That's it for this video. Take care.